everybody. Welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm your host, Brent Butler, and I'm here with the lovely Gia Woods. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for visiting. Um, I believe you just flew in from LA? Yes, last night. Just got here. And dig in New York? Ugh, love it. I want to move here, definitely. It's really cold, though. It is, but I don't mind it, honestly. So you're here, you're doing like a, a press tour. You've got a yes, single. Yes, my first time ever. This is awesome. And uh, you got the single uh, Jump the Fence? Yes. Coming out February 1st. Yes, next Friday. Next Friday. Yes. That's great. Yeah, I'm so excited. What can we know about the single, or like, what should people expect? Well, the song to me um, is about how, you know, oftentimes I feel like there's so many outside opinions, and it's you know whether it's what you say or what you do or who you should even date. And this song is the exact opposite. This is you know trusting your intuition and just really doing whatever it is that makes you happy at the end of the day. And yeah, that's what really the song's about. I feel like a lot of your songs um, are cheery. Are, no, no, no. I feel like they they they're all about like happy topics, even if they yeah. have, even if they're kind of That's like dark. That's my big thing, yeah. They're kind There's of little dark elements, Well, like but they're dark like in like maybe the, the production or totally. maybe like the vibe, like in a very cool way. You know, like I was talking about the, the voodoo track, like kind of like eerie and like dark sense, but at the same time, you know, you tend to be singing about like being in love. Yeah. Like the song Only a Girl. Definitely, yeah. Um, and it's funny, you, you mentioned uh, people's opinions, which seems like a key word I had read somewhere maybe in a, in a bio of yours or something that you're very opinionated. So I, I thought I'd like to know some of your opinions. I grew up in a very, you know, just religious family. Like my family is super, super old fashioned Persian. So, you know, coming out and being gay is a no, no. <laughs> and so I always felt a little rebellious against that because I've always wanted to just be me, but you know, growing up in that household, it was always difficult. And so that's why I feel like a lot of my music is like opinionated and, you know, cheery. And I just, you know, I hope to be a voice for people who, you know, are going through similar things and yeah. So how have, have you managed to uh, deal with that? You have a very religious family, like you said, where that's, these things I mean, aren't accepted. Music has been my outlet. And that's one of the main reasons why I think I got so involved in music. It's to avoid your family? Literally, probably. That's how I got into it. No, too. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'd be in my, locked in my room, like, playing guitar. Like, I, I started on guitar, so I would always be, you know, writing songs in my bedroom and just lock myself away from, like, the outside world. You've got to be a little proud. Like, you're getting these huge shout outs, like, from Billboard magazine and things, right? Yeah, but they're, like, it's weird. They're, um, they're not really familiar with any, anything okay. in that world. So you're like, be proud of me. <laughs> I'm I, like, I'm, I'm doing something, mom and dad. I'm on but... pop dust. <laughs> And Literally, uh, <laughs> but you know, they're just old fashioned and it is what it is. But I do my best. <laughs> oh, well, um, I, it's great that you have the music, and, and do you find that fans are, you know, might help them through things or yeah, things like that? Definitely. I mean, that's my biggest thing is like, I hope I can just be a voice for anyone who who's experiencing something similar or, you know, they also come from a very old fashioned family because, you know, my culture especially, it's just like still, there's a lot to work on. So it's really cool to be from that, you know, from that culture, but at the same time, hopefully opening doors. Yeah, it is, it is interesting. Obviously it's a, it's a conflict for you, but that might be the source of a lot of, you know, interesting things for you to say. Yeah, definitely. Know? Which definitely. is like kind of, you have to have something to say if you're going to be like writing songs. I mean, what's the point then? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you started on guitar? Yes. And now with like the production or, and the songwriting behind the tracks, like what is your, your process? Does it still start with guitar? Yeah, usually. Um, I usually just pick up the guitar, I sing melodies, and, and sometimes I have the concept or sometimes it just comes to me in the room. Because I oftentimes like to like, co-write or you know talk to the producer in the room and I feel like a lot of those conversations end up becoming a song because yeah. I don't know if you know much about session but like there's so much talking and that's my favorite part it's like therapy session so that's it, it's different every time do you find that there's um those types of sessions uh for songwriters like yourself are very accessible in in LA like I think that we hear that oh, a lot oh yeah I mean I that's where I started is 
I got a publishing deal at a young age and I was writing every day and that's part of how I developed as a writer as, and as an artist and now how do you, you know, do that for the people that are out there watching and they're like I want to do that like I like to write oh that's a really good question it's it's different for everyone but for me I I got lucky I got scouted so it, it's you know I got I'm one of those that just you know straight what, does it, out of, what does it mean to get scouted though does somebody, scouted, that's somebody good, comes into your school and they're like listen yeah you want to be a star really I don't know why my manager was at my high school but they were kind of creepy okay <laughs> um, but they were at my high school and they saw me perform um, in my choir. Uh, it was like a coffee shop kind of night, we call it that. And we just got to sing whatever song we wanted, anyone from the choir. And so I think I did a Beatles song and um, the, my manager was in the crowd and she happened to scout me. And that's kind of what it means. They look, they go out to see artists perform. And that was in LA. And that was in LA, yeah, at hey, my see, high school. In my hometown in South Jersey, we did not have talent scouts. <laughs> Coming to, yeah, oh coming to our high school performances. That's LA for you. Looking for the next big thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, no. Very LA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. That's pretty cool. Okay, so if you're out there and you want to uh, do that, um, go to high school in LA and um, scout. look for a talent scout. Yeah, just look in the crowd, you know. <laughs> Can you scout the scouts? Um, no, I can ne like, definitely not. I can't tell. Like, I mean, there's a billion people in the room, you know? So it's like... Who are it's you? a big auditorium. Yeah, well, actually, my high billion. school is huge. That's what I mean. Like, my, I went to a really big uh, public school, so so many kids. Got to have room for all of them, you know. <laughs> so. um, that's cool. Yeah, sounds very cool. And then uh, you said that uh, you're traveling to New York, but a lot to the Long Island area. Do you see yourself being bi-coastal, or do you have plans I mean, for that? since being in a relationship, definitely. You know, because I now have an excuse to come to New York um, and now work because I'm with Disruptor. So it's like. It's best of both worlds. I'm so lucky. Is the long distance thing difficult to pull off? Um, well, I don't do long distance actually, because um, my partner is in LA with me, so we come to New York oh, together all the okay. time to visit. Exactly. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Really that cool. make, that that's a little bit yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so you have Jump the Fence coming out, and then. I think you have other songs that are going to continually be coming out like every five, yeah. six weeks? Yeah, like every month we're going to be dropping singles, so I'm really excited. And is that going to lead up to an album or are you just going to kind of see where it goes? Honestly, I think we're just seeing where it goes because we just, we're just focused on dropping like songs, that, songs that I love. And yeah. Are these ones that like you kind of have in your back pocket and you've just been sitting on them or is it like you might decide, you know what, no, for the March song, like, I've got this new one, well, swap it out. That's a good question, because there's, you know, one song in particular that I've had, you know, since three years ago, and that's been always a special song to me, and so that's exciting to see that come out finally, and then there's songs that I just wrote this year, and I'm like, wow, my sound has evolved so much. There's, there's not one genre, it's like so many different things, and each song that I'm dropping has a video with it, so I like that there's like a theme, and each video is different, and I've been so involved in that area too, and it's really cool to try that and be involved in that process. That is really cool. Um, I guess, so you had a song from three years ago, uh, like written, r recorded, and produced three years ago, or just yeah. written? Yeah, written and recorded So it's been everything. like ready to go for ready three to go. years. How yeah. do you live with that? Well, I couldn't. It was the so minute. hard. I was like, what is this coming out? But then I was like, I need to find the right partner for this song. And that was Disruptor. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is my moment to like finally put the song out. And I'm so excited that it's going to be out, finally. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I get, if I even have an idea for a song, I text uh, everybody in my contacts. I know, <laughs> like, it's like, really hard. I gotta it's put tough. It out now, it's tough when everywhere. you're sitting on something that you just want to put out, but yeah. you know you have to like wait. It's a process. You have to build you know, towards that, so, yeah. Now, you have all these videos that are going to be coming out in succession with the, uh, with, with the songs. Are the videos going to be connected in any way? Are they going to, like, thematically? Well, it's weird because they're not connected, um, but you see growth. Like, you see my first video coming out, which is next Friday. You see something that, there. And then the next video is something completely different. So I think fans are going to see me grow, and that's going to be really cool because... It's all different personalities in each video. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Gia Woods, for being with us here <laughs> at Pop Dust. Yes, um, thank you so much for having and, me. And being on Pop Dust Presents. Uh, we would love to have you back another time and have yes. you perform. Yes. And really, really looking forward to the single, Jump the Fence, and everything else that you have coming out after that. Amazing. Thank you so much. And for if you me. need somebody to be like in a music video with you. I mean, I Actually, that dog, Fred, is really good. I actually will take that dog. 
It's so cutest cute. dog in the you world. You guys can't see the dog, but it's really cute. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody can except for us. It might be an imaginary Oh my dog. god, imagine? Hmm, we're crazy guys. <laughs> right. Good night, everybody. Good night, and guys. Subscribe Thank and you. stuff, yeah. <laughs>